Hello fellow birders, my name is Dennis Cania. Today we're going to be talking about the difference between hairy and downy woodpeckers. On the DuPage Birding Club Education Channel, we'll be talking about all things bird related. And as I mentioned, today we'll be talking about downy woodpecker and hairy woodpecker. Here I have graphs that show the occurrence of these two species out at Fermilab. Again, this is our data that we've been collecting for 33 years. And you can see that both downy and hairy woodpecker are resident birds and they are readily available throughout the year. Um, over the last four or five years, we've been having difficulty uh, in a few places with getting hairy woodpecker. They're not quite as abundant as downy. Uh, so we do see a few gaps in here, but hopefully we can rectify that with uh, further monitoring uh, specifically targeting those those time periods. So here's a side-by-side -side view of the two species. Uh, that's downy on the left and hairy on the right. And it's quite obvious when you have these birds showing up in a controlled situation that uh, hairies are definitely larger than downies. If you have a suet feeder at your feeding station and every day you see a downy woodpecker, coming and feeding at that station, the very first time that a hairy shows up, you're bound to recognize the fact that you have a much larger woodpecker there. But again, that's in a controlled situation. So um, what I'd like you to keep in mind is that size is not always a reliable measure for, for this identification. There are other more reliable uh, features that we can focus on and we'll talk about those in a minute. So I want you to look at this picture of a hummingbird And then this one. And then I'd like you to think for a second, which one was larger? I've run this test past um, several friends of mine and um, in this clinical trial, so to speak, um, nine out of 10 birders will tell me that the first image was larger than the second image. And in reality, what we see here is that those two hummingbirds are exactly the same size. So there's a reason for this. Uh, our, our brain sees an image um, that's transferred from the eye. And it tries to make sense of that information that's coming in and it does some rationalization to try and help us to identify what the image is. So um, there definitely is this, an occurrence of surrounding habitat uh, affecting what we're seeing in terms of the bird size. I can give you a very specific example that um, I witnessed one time at uh, the Morton Arboretum. I had one of my classes out and we had a very close encounter with a ruby crowned kinglet. It was probably no more than 15 feet in front of us. It was at eye level and we watched it for a very long time. Everybody got exceptional looks at it. It was uh, hopping around foraging in a viburnum shrub which had some large leaves. So after we were finished with that encounter, we were walking down the road just a little bit further. And as we were reaching the parking lot, we had uh, a bird fly across in front of us that I identified as a uh, ruby crowned kinglet. And it landed in a larch tree right adjacent to the road. And everybody was saying, well, there's no way that this can be a ruby crowned kinglet. It's so big, it's so much bigger than the bird we just saw. And here was an encounter where just minutes ago, we had seen a ruby crowned kinglet. And I took my binoculars and raised them and looked at this bird perched in the uh, arch and sure enough it was a ruby crowned kinglet. So the reason for that was that in, you know the first encounter this bird was mixed up with a bunch of really large leaves in that viburnum and now it was perched on branches that had tiny little needles and that just made the bird appear so much larger. And I've had this experience time and time again with various species with large raptors, uh, hum hummingbirds in the Andes and you name it, it's happened all over the place. So um, it's something that's really happening and I can't entirely explain it. But I, the best way that I try to explain it is that your brain is trying to rationalize this, this view and make sense of it so that you know it, it feeds you some reliable information. In the process of doing so, it's kind of mixing up the, the, uh, the image. So let's take a closer look at downy woodpecker. And I've got a couple images here that we can take a look at. And you can see there's really a lot of patterning going on in the wing here. It's a very busy pattern and you know, we, 
immediately will notice that. But both species, at least here in the Midwest and in DuPage County, you'll see that both downy and hairy have this kind of a wing pattern. You can look at the facial pattern, and again, that'll look very, very similar. And so a couple of the features that I do want you to target uh, for making a differentiation is the bill lengths. And it would be easy to just say, well, the bill is small on this bird and it's much larger on a hairy woodpecker. But how do you determine that? Just like we had an example where size wasn't entirely reliable, how can we, how can we actually objectively uh, determine that we have a larger billed bird? And so the way that I'm going to suggest that you do that is starting out at the base of the bill. If we go back to the front of the eye, and then if we go back to the base of the bill and go to the tip of the bill, on a downy woodpecker, those two measurements are going to be just about equal. We can go over this example as well. You can see here's the base of the bill, and go back to the front of the eye, and then from the base of the bill back out to the tip is about equal. It's certainly not more than double. So both of these birds uh, would pass the downy woodpecker test because uh, those two distances are equal. <clears throat> Another thing that we can look at is in the tail. And both species will have outer uh, sections of the tail that are all white. And in this case, we can see some black flecks here. They're sometimes hard to see. They might sometimes be washed out or they might be worn out. So uh, we have to look closely, but if we do find these black flecks, we can be sure that we have a downy woodpecker. And we've gone through some examples of how you know, we can read feathers and determine how they're creating the feather, um, the field marks that we see. And here's another example. So we're looking now at the underside of a downy woodpecker's tail, and we can see there's actually barring going across the tail. So when we see it from the upper surface, we're actually seeing part of that barring um, it's coming through and showing in those, in those white areas. So um, we would definitely see if this bird is tipped like it is here, you would definitely see this barring, and so that would help cinch the ID of this bird as well. I threw this image in here just so that uh, we can learn a little bit more about what feathers can tell us. And so these are the secondaries and then tertials for a downy woodpecker. And the part of the feather that we would actually see when the wing is folded, as we are seeing here, you'd be seeing the outer web, which is to the left of my uh, cursor. So everything on this side, this narrow part of the feather, this narrow web, you see that one and that one and that one and that one all stacked up on top of each other. And it's those little spots that are sticking out, these little scalloped white areas on the outer edge or on the inner edge as well, but you don't see that. On this outer edge, you see these little spots. And all those spots with you know this feather and then this feather stacked on top of it, and it's offset slightly perhaps. And this one's stacked on top of those two, and it's offset slightly perhaps. And so you start to see all these little dots appearing. And those are coming from the edges of the secondaries. And we have the same thing going on in the primaries. So this is just a little FYI so that you can see a little bit more about uh, how feathers are changing appearances of birds. So here's our hairy woodpecker. And again, we're gonna go and look at the bill lengths. And so in these examples where we're getting a good profile, it's quite easy to see that here's the base of the bill. And so back to the eye and then base of the bill out to the tip. And if we repeat that again here from the base of the bill out to the eye, base of the bill out to the tip of the bill. We do that over and over again. You can see that this is, represents a much larger or longer distance than it does from the base of the bill back to the eye. So that would make this a hairy woodpecker. Uh, some of these birds that I have represented here are actually from further west in the range, and you'll see there's a lot less white flecking going on in the wings. And so, and the under parts are a little dingier, dirtier looking. Um, what we find is that hairy woodpecker does change in appearance quite a bit over range, and we do get darker birds as we move further west. But if we look at the white outer edge of the tail in this example, and you can see it quite well here, and there's just a little bit of it showing here, but in all three of those cases, we see no dark flecks appearing in that white um, band. And the reason for that is if we look at this bird who's tipped over a bit and we can see the underside of the tail. And once again, you can see there are no bars here like we saw in the downy woodpecker. So all these images would help you to cement the deal that this is in fact a hairy woodpecker. So we've got some key facts to remember. Uh, size is not always a reliable measurement. Granted, there'll be occasions where that'll work fine for you. 
but I wouldn't rely on that solely because uh, it, it, we've, we've seen examples where that can be misleading in the field. So we wanna compare some other things to help um, seal the deal on our identification. And one of those things would be that bill length. And the way to do that is to measure again from the base of the bill out to the tip and the base of the bill back to the eye. And then compare those. And if they're pretty close to equal, then we have a downy woodpecker. If that distance out to the tip of the bill is double the uh, other measurement, then we're looking at a hairy woodpecker. We should also keep in mind that in both species, the male has a larger bill than the female, but the bills of downy and hairy woodpeckers do not overlap. So we may see in examples where uh, maybe that downy woodpecker male's bill is slightly longer than being equal distant to that measurement back to the eye, but it's still certainly not double the length. So uh, we can still count that as a, as a downy woodpecker. All white outer tail feathers will not necessarily mean that you have a hairy woodpecker. You could have uh, the black flecks kind of worn out of a downy woodpecker. But certainly if you do find black flecks, you know for sure you have a downy woodpecker. So keep that in mind that no flex doesn't guarantee hairy, but black flecks in, the, in that area certainly does guarantee downy. So thanks for taking the time to view this video. Hopefully we have given you some bird food for thought. And I hope you'll join us again in the future as we explore all things bird related.